Man, they'll let anything have a legacy sequel nowadays. You get a legacy sequel. You get a legacy sequel. You get a legacy sequel. We all get legacy sequels. Hocus Pocus 2 is brought to us by director Ann Fletcher and stars Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and the other witch. Kathy and Jimmy. Two young women accidentally bring back the Sanderson sisters to modern day Salem and must figure out how to stop the child hungry witches from wreaking havoc on the world. So Hocus Pocus 2 is a sequel to the 1993 cult classic Hocus Pocus. And seeing as how this sequel is almost 30 years later, of course, that makes it a legacy sequel, which are all the rage nowadays. With things like Mad Max Fury Road, Top Gun Maverick, and Beavis and Butthead do the universe, plus many, many more legacy sequels sequels are just all over the place. So after years and years of begging from its fans, Disney finally decided, hey, we want to throw our hat in the ring and get some of that sweet, sweet legacy sequel cheddar. Now let me go ahead and go on record right out the gate and say I am not a Hocus Pocus fan. Nothing against the movie, nothing against people that like the movie, but it came out in 1993. I would have been around like 14 years old at that point. I was not its target demographic. I've met many people throughout the years that have quite the fondness for the film, but for me, myself, it just never did it for me. Hell, my wife, who is a bit younger than me, absolutely loves the movie, and while I wasn't really looking forward to this flick, she was really looking forward to it. So you may be asking yourself, then why the hell are you reviewing this movie? Well, I wanted to kind of give the perspective of someone who doesn't have a fondness of that original, and also I watched it with someone who does have quite a bit of fondness of it, so I was going to kind of get both perspectives here. So after watching the film, am I now a Hocus Pocus convert? Hurt? No, not really. That's not to say the movie's bad, but it's still not really for me. But at the same time, I fully acknowledge that I, now in my 40s, am not the target demographic for this film. This movie is targeting young kids around like 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and people that were that age when the original one came out. People that have a love and nostalgia for the first film. And since I'm not in that age demographic and I don't have that love and memory of it, then and yeah, it's no surprise that this movie didn't really do it for me either. Now on the flip side of that, I will say that the movie's not bad. I wasn't just like disgusted by it. I wasn't bored out of my mind. I mean, I wasn't having the greatest time in the world either, but it was fine, I guess. Knowing what I was getting myself into, knowing that this was a harmless, kooky, corny, family fun film, I was fine with it. It didn't really bother me. I'm never gonna watch this movie again. And if it wasn't for the fact that my wife was really looking forward to it, I probably wouldn't have watched it this time, but seeing as how I did devote about an hour and 45 minutes to this of my life, I'm not like really mad about it. Well, the story, no surprise here, is pretty damn paper thin, and most of the jokes did fall pretty flat for me. There were a few times that I got a mild chuckle out of what was going on. And while I'm no expert on the original film, it does seem like the movie is playing to its audience. It seems like there is stuff here that seems like there's some type of relevance to it. I just didn't get it. So if you are a fan of the film, you're probably going to see a lot of things you like. The look overall of the film is pretty good. I mean, it sells what they're going for. It's fine. The effects of the film, well, they're kind of hit or miss. I was actually surprised by this because this is a Disney property. And while none of the effects were like terrible, there were some that really did stand out. They were very inconsistent. Now, this may have been because they were kind of trying to go for the vibe of the original film. And that movie came out in the early 90s, so its effects, of course, weren't up to snuff for what we have nowadays. So when some of the effects in this film looked a little bit cheesy and kind of cheap. Maybe that's what they were going for, or maybe they just didn't have a lot of money to go around, which is Disney, so I don't really get that. Though, that could be, because it seems like Disney doesn't really have a lot of confidence in this project, nor did they ever. They wouldn't even greenlight this damn thing until they saw some dollar signs. I'm like, yeah, I know, they're a studio, and they are there to make money. You would think that they would have some type of care for their creations of the past. Our main cast of young characters in the film are fairly forgettable, honestly. Sam Richardson, as a shop owner is probably the most memorable character out of the movie. That is of course with the exception of the three lead witches Bette Midler, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Kathy and Jimmy. Yes, I forgot her name again. Doug Jones shows up as well as a character that I think was in the original film. I don't know if Jones played him or not and he was pretty good as this character and while the character is 
there in quite a few scenes. We don't really get a lot from him, but what we do get, I did somewhat enjoy. Now, when it comes to the main event of the film, the Sanderson sisters, they are going all out here. Parker, Najimi, and especially Midler are giving it their all. Even though I'm not really a fan of these films or these characters, I gotta say that these three, they came into this thing giving it 120%. If you enjoyed their characters in the previous film, I think you're really going to enjoy them here. They seem like they are having a great time making this film. In fact, everybody in the movie seemed like they were having a fun time making this flick. And even though this movie wasn't my cup of tea, I absolutely recognize that. I look at this and the performances we're getting and say, while I'm not in love with this, I gotta admit that the enthusiasm on screen is a bit infectious. Now this is the part where I would say that if you were not a fan of the original film, such as myself, you're probably not gonna be a fan of this movie. It's not going to change that. However, if you were a fan of the original film, you're probably probably gonna really like this movie. However, I gotta say the one thing that made me take pause on that is my wife who watched it with me, who is a big fan. After watching the film, I turned to her and said, what'd you think? And she said, eh, kind of disappointed. She more or less said that it seemed like they were trying too hard to be the first film, but never quite living up to that. Kind of like they weren't doing their own thing. They were just trying to do the same thing again, but not doing it as well. She did say that she wasn't like bored out of her mind or anything, but she was quite let down, very disappointed. And in her words herself, she's not going to watch this one again. Now she may be the minority here. I don't know, but she is a fan of the original and while she didn't hate this one, she certainly didn't love it either. Guys, overall, Hocus Pocus 2 was a harmless family flick. I didn't love it, and I didn't hate it. I was just kind of indifferent to it. The movie has a fairly good aesthetic, but the story and characters are all fairly forgettable, and the effects are very hit or miss. All that being said, our three main leads here, which is what everybody who's here to watch this movie is here to see, are on board 150%. The amount of fun they're having here is damn infectious, and if you're not feeling the rest of the movie it will definitely get you through this thing while you watch this on streaming across the street While the movie wasn't for me, I get that it never was going to be for me. But if it was a movie that you have a deep nostalgia for, then check it out and I think you'll find something here to like. So there it is guys, my review of Hocus Pocus 2. If you enjoyed and want more content like this, hit that subscribe button and help my little channel grow. If you want to help out the channel, check out my Patreon in the description below, become a jar and get some of the awesome benefits that go along with that like these guys. And possibly check out my top tier and become a like my man Silverlock and Marge G. And you can also check out my newly opened memberships here on YouTube below as well. If you liked what I had to say, give me a like. If not, let me know in the comments below why. And as always, stay sexy, Salem. That's not six feet under. Zombie. While legacy sequels are all the rage right now, I guess the question that comes up anytime one comes out is, was it needed? Do I think that this movie needed a legacy sequel 30 years later? I mean, the movie wasn't for me. I've already explained that, so I'm probably going to say no. However, like I said, I understand this movie was not made for me and those who it was for. I'm happy that you got it. But anytime we talk about sequels, legacy or otherwise, that we've been waiting for a long time, there's one movie that is always going to come up because I'm going to bring it up, and that would be Dread 2012. Where is my sequel that movie was flipping awesome when are we going to get it i mean come on everybody who sees that movie says damn we need a sequel when is it coming out so come on people dread 2012 can we get a dread 2023 i mean damn what the fuck